Super Typhoon Hagibis. This storm is just a beast of a storm system. Winds right now 140 gusting to 170 knots. The good news, it did move well towards the north of Guam, leaving that island relatively unscathed. Uh, mostly I saw that uh, all the schools were closed out there on Tuesday. Saipan as well did take some impacts. People are sheltering in emergency shelters. And you got Tinian just off towards the north there as well. Uh, I mean, they're, they're also taking some impacts. But good news, much of the northern Mariana Islands, very limited amount of population there so storm now starting to pull away but boy it is still a beast strongest typhoon in the western pacific this year currently impacting northern mariana islands and still central japan it does look like a landfall is going to be likely for you so here's a look at the latest water vapor imagery and i want to show you this here because just look at the cores of the last six hours here on this loop here first you got a little bit of a wobble taking place here that's a trishodio wobble by the way but also just look at the overall explosiveness you have that outflow coming off towards the north but the overall circulation the storm system is just getting bigger and bigger each hour with that moisture inflow coming in from the south a little bit of dry air towards the west here but i mean this is just running right through that and that is not going to slow this down at all and in fact according to the joint typhoon warning center the intensity is expected to go up a bit more that following there's a rapid intensification earlier on today where it went from approximately a tropical storm with about 55 knots to a super typhoon upwards of 140 knots in the matter of about 12 hours and this is actually from meteorologist Sayaka Mori out there, one of my former co-workers at NHK World. She's just showing you the intensity change over the past 24 hours uh, just uh, from this infrared imagery via the Himawari 8 satellite. So here's the latest track from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. Currently winds of 140, gusty 170. It is expected to intensify a bit more, 145 to 175 as it just moves over this ripe area for development. Boy, it is going to be a beast out here before it's starting to turn towards the north as an upper level trough moves through this is what i'm more worried about now not the philippines as i mentioned a few times not okinawa it is central japan i mean by the time this makes it up there we're still looking at 105 maybe 90 knot sustained wind coming on shore there and even into the tokyo area or at least the key peninsula i mean this is just according uh, to the um joint typhoon warning center but i'll show you the european model the guidance there really does pull this towards the northwest with this upper level trough starting to kind of dig through as we go ahead into the latter part of the week and you can see that developing here coming out of the korean peninsula and that's going to allow to kind of dig this and allow it to turn towards the north eventually moving on shore there into central japan so it all depends on the timing and the recurvature with this because of course uh with the european models a little bit further towards the west this would be better news for Tokyo, but worse news for places like Osaka and Kyoto. In fact, you can just zoom right in on them. I mean, that's that would be a pretty rough day. We're talking about what the sustained winds of 26, but just a little bit offshore. We still have sustained winds of 53, upwards of 60 miles per hour. That would be coming on shore uh, with some pretty good veracity, plus the tremendous amount of rainfall that would be impacting the mountains there. So, of course, flooding and landslides definitely would be a major issue. Like I said, though, the uh, European models a little bit further towards west from the joint typhoon warning center and the gfs model latest runs have actually been a little bit further towards the east from what the european model is saying so it all just depends on what time that recurvature will be taking place and approximately when that upper level trough is going to start to dig and pull this through in fact i'll throw up the upper level winds and we'll just look ahead into thursday into friday and you can start to see what i'm talking about here with this little dip in the jet stream just north of that center of circulation that will allow that to pull off towards the north North and east. Plus, it's rounding that Westpac High, which is located just towards the east and basically keeping this running around. And actually, you can really see that pretty decently here on this imagery with that basically uh, that clockwise winds just towards the east of that center. But for today, it is all eyes on Guam out here. I wonder if we even have any webcams located out here in the Guam. I could probably pull up and there it is there's our current look oh that is inside of a mall so that's not very helpful at all anything else here hmm nope all right that's 
unfortunate. All right, guys, anyways, stay safe out there. Uh, thanks for watching this full update. Please let me know what you think is going to be happening here with this storm system. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please let me know down in the comment box down below. And as always, thanks for watching. All right, bye.